All right, okay, this is the start of a, I guess, blog format video that I'm putting together. So this may or may not appear on YouTube, depending on how good or bad the quality is. So just to start off to say, I finally decided to upgrade my um, sim rig in the sense that I didn't have one before. And uh, I don't know if you've seen on my channel, I do quite a lot of uh, virtual reality racing. And I've started off with the Logitech G29, which I've got over here. So I've been using this thing for the last two years now, and I've been clamping it on and off my very messy workstation over here. And I finally um, decided it, enough was enough of me clamping it on and off, and it's time to upgrade. But just a bit of background on the components I've upgraded to date. So actually, the first thing I did upgrade was the pedals that come with the G29. Now these have been pretty good. I'd say the only thing I didn't like, and a lot of people tend to complain a little bit about it, is the the brake on it is very stiff. Um, some people do a modern take out the little rubber washer that's inside the cylinder, but what I did because I do a lot of GT racing, I don't need the clutch. I basically mapped the clutch pedal as the brake, which isn't ideal, but it, there is a bit of um, springiness on on the clutch, so you can use it for trail braking. It does push back enough, uh, and largely it's been okay. But what I did um, what I did notice started to happen was the accelerator pedal developed. I'd call it like a stickiness, an electronic stick. So although there'd be free movement of the pedal, I'd push down, let go, and the car would still be revving. Um, so my first component I upgraded was actually to the new uh, Fnatic TSL pedals. So I went with the basic setup, but I also ordered the clutch pedal just um, to save on the uh, shipping costs. So if I wanted to order that separately, I wouldn't have to pay shipping twice essentially, but I've not used it up until now. So. Something else to mention, I forgot about the pedals, so when I bought these to begin with um, they come with a little network type connector which is designed to go into Fnatic um, style wheelbases but if you don't have that you'll need to get one of these Club Sport USB adapters if it focuses. Uh, so that's what I've been running up until now but obviously I've got the new um, CSL DD base this will plug straight into the base, and then from the base will be a USB cable. So this is now surplus. But if anyone's wondering for the CSL pedals, yes, you can run them off USB if you get one of these little adapters. I can't remember the price, but I'll pr put it up on the screen once I've uh, looked up on the internet. Um, only other things to mention is that you can adjust the positioning on this plate, footrest plate, and obviously I've gotten in super comfy extra wide um, horse riding mode I'd say uh, but once I get the uh, clutch pedal on then this brake pedal is going to move more to the middle um, in terms of how they perform these have definitely been an upgrade for me in the fact that they're a lot more precise um, I can't remember the number of bits I think these are 8 bit and these are maybe 16 bit I'll have to check but these are definitely more accurate and also the range of movement feels bigger probably because the pedals a lot longer and it feels more like natural normal car pedals as opposed to these which are very miniaturized I guess um, other things to mention and I guess it's an advantage for the Logitech pedals is it has these carpet grippers uh, so these have been very useful when I've been using this on my carpet uh, under my desk, so if you if you lift this lever up, this pops down. These spikes help grip. Something that the Fnatic pedals don't have. So just keep that in mind if you're planning on getting these. There's no grippers underneath. Um, but there are like little rubber grippy things, but they don't really add that much grip on carpet. So what I did, I just made sure I had something behind these two back pieces here so that when I was applying pressure it didn't slide this far back. Um, back over to the Logitech G29 setup. Uh, this is the shift I used which 
generally used for rallying. I do a lot of racing in ACC, so most of the time I don't need it, but when I play dirt rally, I use manual cars or, say, automobile blister. Um, it's quite handy to have a, a manual gear shift. Now, this typically plugs into the base of the G29, um, so obviously that'll no longer work. However, uh, there is a company or a fella called Leo Bodner. Uh, I think they're based near Silverstone in the UK, and they do this uh, serial to USB adapter cable. So I plan to get that installed later today. And in terms of upgrading the wheel and the base, uh, I've gone for a Fanatic setup. So I've gone for the McLaren GT3 wheel. At some later date, I might go for an additional club wheel that's round for rallying. But since I'm mostly doing GT racing at the minute, I went for the entry level GT wheel. And this is great for VR because it's very simple. There's not too many buttons to get mixed up if you can't actually see what you're looking at. Um, so yeah, I've got that. And uh, I've got the CSL DD base for this to plug into and the 8 newton meter power pack, but I'll talk more about it later. In terms of space, so I've got this dead area here, so this is actually a multi-purpose room, it's mainly my office room for when I'm working from home, and this area here was actually meant for my other half, but you end up never using it and prefers to work elsewhere in the house. Uh, so it's a case of use it or lose it situation. So the rig is going to go into that gap there. So I will have a, a bit of a desk should I wish to put, put a monitor onto it. But since I play in VR most of the time, I don't really need one. And I've also got my PC set up over there. And there's the GoXLR for streaming and complete mess of wires. Wow. So yeah, that's the space. And in terms of the rig, I've gone for the SimLab GT1 Evo. Uh, which was SimLab's entry level um, extrusion, aluminium extrusion profile uh, rig, which is basically a frame that you can just bolt um, additional parts to if you wish to expand it. And I plan to put wheels, um, caster wheels, which is the cooler accessories that I bought over the standard, so I can wheel it in and out if needs be, and also the very essential uh, cup holder. Uh, but in terms of mouse plates and things like that, I've also got this little ledge here I can use as well. Okay, just a little build update. I've got most of the base of the frame built now. I've also put on these little caster wheels so I can easily roll it under the desk once it's complete. What I have found though is with the instructions, it's uh, very vague on the positioning of the pedal deck, um, the uprights, and where this should go measurement wise so I guess it's just a case of figure it out yourself also the um, reference to what bolts to use uh, looking at the instructions it's not that clear so I'm going to assume it's the same T-nuts and M8 bolts that um, I've used on these corner joints here so just something to know if you're looking at this once I get it figured out I might just uh, post dimensions uh, put the dimensions in the description so I'm five foot ten. It is going to vary, I guess, depending on your size and what pedals you've got installed. All right, time to carry on. It's starting to take shape now. We've got the um, pedal deck installed. Uh, you see, we've got the bolts here, and based on the uh, the diagram positioning, I've tried to get as close as um, it is to the diagram. The bolts are quite loose at the minute so once I get these uh, chair rails on and bolted in I can stick the the chair on get the pedals mounted and see position wise and then move these uprights uh, loosen these up and move them forward and backwards uh, depending on how it feels in terms of the bolts most of them are these um, I think the 16 mil m8 um, bolts and the ones that I've put in the pedal deck are these slightly longer 20mm ones and the washers. So there seems to be eight of these in the pack. So I presume four of them are for the pedal deck. Right, so I've unboxed the pedal clutch kit and installed it onto the um, CSL plate. Uh, so previously 
because I mostly race GT, I just had the brake and accelerator uh, set up. But I thought now I've got a rig in place with a shifter I'm going to use. I installed the clutch, so I've um, loosely attached the pedals back to the plate. This plate is optional, but it does lock the pedals in place, and I don't have anything to go over the top of the pedals if they were to be loose. So, in case you've not installed these pedals before, there's um, only two sort of anchor points at the bottom here, one this side and one this side, and they're on the underside, which makes it a bit tricky. And looking at the pre-drilled slots on this particular uh, model of Simlab rig, there only seems to be uh, these position holes that line up with it. And if we move it up there, so really that's the only place if I was to use them, <clears throat> the pedals could go into. And if we have them roughly lined up, I was checking this earlier, there's actually, so there's rubber grips here. Maybe I can pop these out to actually use the slots, but if I use the existing holes and I don't take the rubber off, there's actually no holes aligned on this plate. So, I mean, if, if I have to, I can drill it, I suppose. But ideally, I'd like to see if it'd fit without me having to drill drill this. So, after some playing around, I settled on just two bolts for the moment on the uh, accelerator and the clutch. And I've actually not even installed one of the, um, the bolts to the ups underside yet. Uh, but this is actually pretty stable. There's no give on that, and that's just lightly hand-tied, hand-tightened. Um, so I might actually see how that performs, and uh, at a later date come back and drill the underside if there's any movement. But that's actually surprisingly secure, probably because these have got the rubber feet still installed on the pedals, which is adding grip. So yeah, that was actually a lot easier than I thought. Okay, I've now got the wheel deck installed. Um, I've actually gone a bit uh, rogue from the instruction manual because in the diagram they've got this piece here, this profile, set onto this track here. But uh, I've decided to go for the track further back and I'm going to put another corner, the corner brackets here which they've got on the other side. But the reason for that is um, it allows these bars to be set close to me so that when I'm when I've got this wheeled up to the desk it'll be closer to um, well to the desk so I could potentially have a monitor here as well figured out to to help line this up this is a 500 millimeter profile here so with a tape measure you can gauge 250 mils there I'll just use this as a very rough guide that's approximately on 250 but I'm going to adjust this anyway once I've got the um, the chair installed but it's starting to take form almost there right time to get the chair okay for I take a quick look at the seat before I install it so this is a Sparco R100 seat that I got from Demon Tweaks uh, I think it was on sale uh, for £214 uh, it was one of the cheapest actual proper car racing seats I could see um, and a few different sim racing websites seem to list it as a seat so i've also seen a few other youtubers have, have used this as well so i'll be interested to see um how this feels because um i, I didn't get a chance to actually sit in it but um i had a look around at used seats on ebay and they're actually quite expensive so i thought i'll just pay a bit more get something that's nice and fresh um the other thing to note with this particular seat it does recline now that's not always um, a good idea for sim rigs you want something as sturdy as possible but in my case i'm using these uh pedals which are fairly lightweight so i don't t intend to have really heavy pedals so i'm hoping there won't be um much flex at all also being a car seat I sh I sh hopefully it's uh, a bit more sturdy but um yeah impressed with it so far um i'll get it installed all right, it's been a few days since I did the uh, last video. I think it's the seat I mentioned I was going to install. So since then, I've got the rest of the rig pretty much complete now. Um, so as you can see, the seat's installed, the, the CSLDD, 
is attached along with the McLaren GT3 wheel and the pedal decks installed so there's a couple of things I'll mention is eventually got the CSL pedals installed just using uh, larger M8 washers and I found just putting on the accelerator and the brake pedal if you tie these down um, pretty tightly that's enough and this this thing doesn't move at all so if you're looking to install these without drilling the plate that comes with this particular rig then that, that's an option that works it's also set slightly off to the left uh, just so these two pedals are more in the middle because I mostly race GT so I don't really use the clutch that often unless I'm rallying so that's why it's slightly off to the left and for the minute I've just took the wires down the profile tubing there so I do have some cable ties I'll uh, connect at some point um, what else? Uh, the other thing to mention is yeah I, I am eventually settled on installing a inverted bucket seat rail so it was originally on this lower profile bar here and you can see I've actually scuffed it a bit already but that's expected with uh, a black frame like this it, it's going to get a few knocks but uh, I touch that up with a probably a marker or a bit of pen I suppose but um, if you are so so this is really I'd say set up now for GT um, when it was on the single profile it was a bit too low unless you wanted the chair reclined really far back for a sort of formula position but then it'd still need more of a tilt uh, so you could probably get away with two profile bars if you wanted in formula I'd recommend but for GT yeah, I'd say a three piece bar which is 120 mil would do the job but uh, this inverted bucket seat plate is actually sturdier than I thought and again I just put some uh, fairly big 2mm M8 washers on there to, to help secure it on so yeah uh, been pleased with that so far been adjusting it quite a few times so I've had this um, higher and lower just in the height of the, the, the cross section here and I've got it at an angle I'm happy with so pretty happy with how it's dialed in and yeah enjoying, enjoying using it so we'll see how this Friday ACC Friday goes but uh, that's probably it. The other thing I've got left to do is install a shift amount here uh, but I am waiting for a bracket so we're going to attach this Logitech shifter so this will go on the side here probably on the left side because in the UK I'm used to having the gear shifter on the left and then the mount will go on the side here so this can just attach but uh, as it's not essential at the minute because I'm doing mostly GT racing using the um, sequential shifter so yeah overall really pleased with it the um, this has been quite a major jump from the G29 I can't remember if I m mentioned it in one of the earlier videos but um, probably deserves a, vi a video in itself or maybe I'll comment on it more in stream but um, yeah this has definitely made the experience a lot more enjoyable and also a positive side effect with it being on this rig is a lot of the feedback um, when you're going over the the curbs and different parts of the track when there's vibrations it actually does move through the frame and you can feel it in the seat and I don't know if that's also partly due to the fact that it's on casters that there is some sort of um, frame movement but uh, there's no relative movement to me but it just means you, you can feel the feedback more so that was a surprise a surprising benefit I guess of having a rig so I look forward to using this a lot more in future and get on with racing all right happy with that turned out um any questions just leave them in the comments below and i'll try to answer them all right um i may just finish off this video with some close-ups of the rig so you can see some of it in more detail